All right. Before we get this episode started, I just want to read one thing. I saw a comment on Star Wars Theories, um, his watch party and his discussion. And uh, it, it intrigued me. And I want to make a point real quick before we start this stuff. So it says, dude, with all due respect, the show is about the rebellion and Andor, about the underworld a little bit. It's not about Anakin or Vader. Just be patient for a moment and let them create something new. This is truly all Star Wars fans. Is it? Is it? Uh, sorry. Is it truly all Star Wars fans want is cameos of past characters? Gosh, better call Saul as slow as heck, but the best TV ever. I say, sadly, this show has the potential to be so much better than the average what the average fans want slash deserve, and it pains me to say this. If this received bad press, we're going back to the painful Kenobi season zero two and Leia spinoffs. Let them create some new stuff with talented people. Be patient. Sadly, we'll be robbed of future newer and exciting projects just because the gripping, the griping about Vader and Anakin and past characters. George would be the first. George would be the first who'd come up with weird shows, which is, which would be hammered by critics. Uh, just trust the process a little and let go of the Vader and Emperor, Emperor obsession. This show, this show, I don't think will even contain them. And for a lot of fans, this will mean it's a bad show, unfortunately. Now, let me touch on something that they said. They said is all that Star Wars fans want is cameos. And it's not on the fans for people expecting that or wanting that. Because even in the press and the trailers, they dropped plenty of images and shots of clones yeah and for as long as i can remember since endgame with disney marvel and stuff let's say a little bit past endgame that's all they've really given us is they've set a standard they've set an example they've set this an expectation an expectation thank you they've set an expectation where they give you all these cameos like the mandalorian season one in my opinion is the best Star Wars ever. That's just my opinion. Season two... What does it show about me? Oh, be quiet. Anyway, The Mandalorian Season 2 kind of went down a little pegs for me because, as I, can, as I said, I want a show that's just about itself. We want Din. We want a show about Din just being about Din. We didn't need 100 other people to come in. But since, but since then, like, look at it. The last Star Wars project we got that wasn't around Obi-Wan or a main character, they gave us Bo-Katan, Boba Fett, the Night Owls, Ahsoka, and uh, Luke Skywalker, Cad Bane, Black Crescenton. They set an example. They set a bar. It's not on us for having the expectations of seeing, who knows, a younger Boba Fett hunting... Um, hunting uh uh cassie and andor or a cameo from uh cal kestis or something like that like this i'm not saying this is what i want i wouldn't be mad but this is what people curate in their minds they cure up these fan theories and they curate these these expectations that disney themselves has set it's not on us for not being like And I'll get into my thoughts and our thoughts and feelings about the episodes here in a second. But it's not our fault if we expected something. Because Disney and Star Wars and Marvel have put things in place. So that's the expectation. So when I see this, all the trust the process, trust this. Stop. It's really not that deep. Like if some people... Even if they're not expecting things, it's okay for people to not like something. Like there was a TikToker who said facts that Star Wars fans aren't ready to hear that Andor is the best Star Wars we've gotten in a long time. And that's an opinion because it really, to me personally, isn't Um, the best Star Wars we've ever gotten is the original trilogies. And I will not hear anything else. Um, Anyway, I just wanted to. kind of put that out there for someone to think about if you go back and you look at a lot of the stuff Disney and Star Wars has set an expectation that oh hey here's this cameo here's that cameo and in our Mandalorian discussion talk or a spoiler discussion talk uh, we hit on that and we want to see 
a story about our main character just about them. Exactly, 100%. So, with that in mind, welcome to the Dead Kings Podcast. That was a little bit of a longer intro. It is I, TXTV, and Brady right over there. Uh, he's right there. And we are in the beautiful city of uh, Coruscant. And we are yeah. obviously talking about Andor Season 1, Episodes 1 through 3. I personally cannot really remember them. I was going to watch through them again today, but we just wanted to get on here and get to the podcast. Brady has a lot he wants to say, so I will allow Brady to open the floodgates. Okay, so honestly, like the last thing we did this on was a She-Hulk, and I gave it a zero, but this is like 100 times better even than She-Hulk. Like I would watch this 10,000 times over more than She-Hulk, and... I liked it. It was, There was something about this, like the way they laid it out and the non-lack of cameos and everything was perfect for me. This felt like the next phase, if you will, in the Star Wars franchise. The next non-Skywalker related story that was like, wow, we're not hearing about the Skywalkers. We're not getting a bunch of cameos from characters we've seen 100,000 times at this point now. Mm -hmm. We're getting all new characters. We're getting all new droids. We're getting all all other kinds of new stuff that we just haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. And just from the first episode all the way to the third episode, I liked it. It was just new, new, new. Take in the new. And I was all about it. So I will say, even though we obviously know the outcome of Cassian, I loved it. So mm. far, I've loved it. And I definitely got some Lord of the Flies like mindset going mm. when i saw the tribe of children <laughs> yeah 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 it it <sighs> i don't know i don't mean to interject into your thing but for me it just to touch on what you said about how we know the outcome of cassian and this isn't me trying to sway anybody's opinion this is my own i i was not like <sighs> i was not a huge fan of rogue one when i first saw it there were a couple scenes that i was like oh this is really really fun this is okay but other than Sharut Imway, I didn't really get invested in any of the characters enough to be like, hey, I want a spinoff show about this person. Um, yeah. And it's really hard to get invested in a character. Like, here's the comparison. that uh, Everyone's comparing the Mandalorian to, Ka to Andor. We don't know Din's story. We really don't. We don't know Cassian's, but we know how his ends. Right. We know it's kind of spoilers knowing because they're like, this is the spark of the rebellion okay, we understand how the rebellion starts. We know where they are by the time Rogue One comes around. So we're just going to watch Cassian do a bunch of scummy stuff until then? Okay. But I could be wrong. Who knows? We're only three episodes in, which apparently is a quarter of the way in. Now, Din, on the other hand, we have no idea where it's going to go. Right. Maybe they'll just do three seasons. He'll become the Mandalore and that's it. Whatever. But I think that's the thing why people are loving Din so much and that he just is a stolen Boba Fett in different armor. Oh, don't anyway, even. We will go there soon enough. Anyway, um, excuse me. So that's just, it's a new story. I really like it. I really like seeing the underworld. I really like seeing someone walking into a cantina and it's not shoot them up every time. Yeah. It's yeah. not it's not a it's not a fight at every cantina. Like this story, honestly, again, like I said, I can't really remember a lot of it. It just it was a lot to take in and it was re it was really, really slow. So it's I don't know, and, and then like the whole the, the 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 back and forth, I don't know if it was a flashback or flash forward or whatever. That stuff was kinda taking me out of it a little bit. But it is fresh. It is something nice and new and, and and a different story. A grounded, very much more grounded. Like, um, Brady and I have both been watching through all the original Star Wars movies. Or all the, all the like, the Skywalker saga in preparation to do, like, a uh, uh, rating the movies type of thing. And uh, it's just nice to slow down for a second and, like, for like me, my favorite Star Wars movie of all time is Phanta the Phantom Menace. And it's nice to just slow down, hear some dialogue, flesh some things out. Like I know a lot of people are expecting shoot 'em up every five seconds. 
but there needs to be a reason behind it. And you really see Cassian when he kills that Republic guy or whatever, you see it sinks in. You never yeah. see that in Star Wars before. When someone else, like, I think really the only other time was when Anakin cut off, kill, helped kill Mace Windu and when Luke cut off Vader's hand. They, it's uh, in um, uh, uh, Return of the Jedi. Cassian's like, crap, right. what did I just do? A lot of the times in Star Wars, they just shoot and they don't care. Right, yeah, there's no emotion behind it. And there's little to no consequence. Yeah. So, that was really nice to see. His little droid. His little droid. I love his he, little I, droid. I love it. I, I'm like, don't. B, I think they just call him B. Yeah, the little red droid. Yeah. yeah. B is what they call him. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love B. He's freaking awesome. Uh, But other than that, like, oh, and then the part where... B has the has the 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 com link inside of him, and they're raiding the old lady's house. And you're just like, oh, hey, hey, no, no, no! That's no. the stuff it builds up to. That's that's laying the groundwork. Like that's like I've always said: show, don't tell. Yeah. Um, yep. And that 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 stuff. If you kind of go back to Rise of Skywalker and the, the prequels, if they would have done that stuff and built up to the third movie. The emotions would have been there. They did that in three episodes. <laughs> like yeah. it was for me, a storyline payoff like that was so good. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. Like, like here, you go off, you go off. Give me some more of your in- input. I, I just think it was so good. Like you said, like there was a lot of emotion behind it. And yes, we know where Cassian's story ends, but for me, I kind of forgot about all that. Like the only thing I know is like, Oh yeah, he's in rogue one. Beyond that, I wasn't thinking too much about it. I wanted to see where this led. I wanted to see what, because because here's what's going to happen. I see them introducing some characters that they are going to do spinoffs for. Mm. I just see it. And I think that there's, it, it is kind of cool to see a little bit more of the birth of the rebellion. Like, yeah, we know, but honestly, as long as it's for me, for me, this is me personally, as long as it's good Star Wars content, I don't know that I'll get tired of Star Wars content. If you're just rinsing and repeating stuff, that's when I get tired of it. Like, I think we've all been kind of getting tired of the the cameo appearances and spinoff of characters Mm -hmm. that we don't need spinoff characters for or spinoffs of. Do we need a spinoff of Cassian? Not necessarily, but he's more of an underdeveloped character than some of the other ones we've gotten recently. Mm -hmm. So for us, to me, this is fairly new Star Wars content. We're learning about all different new characters. The part where um, his sister's boyfriend the irish guy or whatever rats him out oh dude that was intense yeah. for me. i was like oh yeah. you little snake yeah. dude yeah and it's like guys that like they're good guys but like stuff like that where they get jealous and stuff like that is what like always in a movie or a show throws a wrench into the works and i liked that and i just kind of like seeing how like cassian's this pos person honestly because he owns everybody money He's asked asked for way too many favors at this point, and now it's all catching up to him. And to see that story, and like honestly, to me, it was just it was good writing. Like, argue with me if you will, it was good writing, good characters, good development by characters, and like I liked the way that the town or village, whatever you want to call it, was the city where yeah. they started banging on the pipes and the pans and the stuff, and then they got yeah. pissed off that those troopers or whatever the security was in his mother's house or mm-hmm. whatever. And they were like basically being using pr- police brutality, if you will. Yeah. And I was like, that's sick. Like they're all about ready to start fighting these officers of 12 against a whole city. Yeah. And it was like, that's a, you could see the fire of the rebellion building. So for me, I thought there was a lot of cool stuff and I agree. You can't be mad at the star Wars fans for having an expectation of cameos. Am I glad that there are no cameos? Absolutely. Because personally, I'm tired of them. A cameo used to come along in a movie once every like three movies. Yeah. And it would take time for it to develop. Like even in the early, early stages of the Star or the the Marvel Universe. And now it just seems like, oh, they're a cameo in there. People love cameos. And of course, they're going to have that expectation. But I'm glad that they broke the expectation. And maybe that's what it took. People bullied the Sonic the Hedgehog movie till they fixed him. Maybe they've bullied Star Wars enough with podcasts like ours and many others that said stop with the cameo appearances. And people are realizing that the cameo appearances are losing their value. But everything in this for me, both visually, 
character development and characters in general, I thought was fantastic. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't agree with you more. And the sad thing is, is a show like this that obviously deserves a bit more press is going to get a lot of backlash, kind of like how Solo did, just because of the failure of the Book of Boba Fett. Now, I was not the nicest to the Book of Boba Fett, but seeing as I cosplay him, it's only because I wanted more. But Boba is a character that you that really didn't need a, back, the, uh, a show about, especially one like that. Yeah, I agree. So coming off the backlash of the Book of Boba Fett, coming off the backlash of Kenobi, which a lot of people were very disappointed with Kenobi up until that last episode, um, mm-hmm. me included. Uh, but that, that that a lot of people are going to now fall off from this show because it's not lightsaber spinning and this and that. Like there are some big YouTubers out there who want to see that, who want to see clones every five seconds, who want to see this, want to see that. Am I kind of tired of them starting up rebellion esque stuff? Yes, like, I uh, unless it's like we know what happens with the rebellion, but again, this the the the, the potential outweighs the negativity to me. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's, yeah. it's nice seeing like if you've ever played um um the old republic, uh, there's a part. It's like right at the beginning, you can go down to the lower levels of the city. And that's what made me really like the aesthetic of the lower levels of the city. Mm -hmm. This show made you feel that like that beginning where he's just walking on that bridge Mm -hmm. like that. I'm like, okay, let's go. Granted. I feel like dropping three episodes right out the gate of a slow burning uh, TV show is not the best idea. I don't know. I think we live in a world nowadays where we have these streaming channels and that's what people do. Like even Kylie said she did at first, she didn't want to watch house of the dragon because she wanted it to all drop and then binge it. And that's what I feel like people want, which when, if it were like a more fast pace moving situation, I would, I would agree with you. I'd be like, you need to drop one episode at a time. You need people to want to not at it. Mm-hmm. But with a lot of speculation, this being a very disappointing show, I feel like dropping three at once was maybe a good idea. So that way, okay, here's three episodes. Because what what have you told me before? Usually, like, you want to watch a good amount of a, a show before you say, nah, it's not for me, right? Yeah. You want to actually watch a couple episodes before you're like, okay, no, it's not for me. So what do they do? They drop three right away. Three is a pretty decent number. I think any more than that would have been a bad choice. But they dropped three to let their story build slowly without losing too much press. It gave us a lot to chew on without giving away too much per se. So personally for me, I think it was a good idea. I think if they had dropped one episode at a time or even maybe just two, it would have been, I think you would have lost a lot more people at once. And the only reason I say that, and I see your point, I see your point. The only reason I say that is because it's, people are obviously with Star Wars going to expect action. I do. Right. And it, honestly didn't have a lot of it it had a lot of suspense and i know that's going to turn people away as comments on reddit and stuff have straight up said excuse me have straight up said i was i almost fell asleep halfway through i i didn't get past the second episode skip to the third episode and just watch the recap when you be caught up no wonder they dropped three and whatever the only reason is is like I get throwing it all out there just because of the push, the the delay of being able to drop it. But also it's like if you have three episodes of something that people are going to turn away from, you kind of shot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand your point 100 percent. It's just. I guess we just have to kind of wait and see if, yeah, what, if like, it plays off, really. Like obviously like Game of Thrones is a lot of talking. It's oh a, my it, god! It's, yeah. It is a lot of talking now. House of the Dragon kind of annoys me because every character is kind of just a scumbag. You know what I mean? Everyone's kind of scummy, and we know every one of these characters is going to die. Yeah, just bring in Tyrion. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> As with the first Game of Thrones, they had a stories and stuff written up, like the the main story. We all right. knew how things were maybe gonna go 
But I look at this like Andor, like, I'm trying to get invested. I'm trying to like it. I'm trying to... Like, I love the aesthetic of it. The story isn't gripping me because, like I said, I've said in about another cast, you could put any other character in here. It'd be great for me. I'm just not a fan of Cassian's character because he was kind of just a dick the entire time in Rogue One. And yeah. he was even a dick when he changed sides to being like, hey, I didn't shoot your dad. See, I'm a good guy. See, not all of us are bad. And then he helped Jin out and then he dies. So he's like that all the way up until uh, Rogue One. Now, here's my only issue. With the philosophy and my only plot hole, maybe someone can explain it to me down in the comments below. But Cassian says he was in the war for the rebellion since he was six years old. But he wasn't. Well, I don't know how old he is when he's with his his tribe of Lord of the Flies, but we could find out because, like, if he, let's say he's six in that, then being from when he goes into that ship and gets taken by what's her name i can't remember her name um mother yeah, freaking, we'll mother. freaking uh, chloroformed yeah uh taken by her till up until now we don't know now here's the issue i have i thought cassian served with the empire at some point yeah no and then got turned i could be wrong but that's what i thought so i want to know at what point did he serve and then did he get kicked out or something so he never from what we're seeing is he never ever was part of the empire he did again like for the rebellion he went undercover and did stuff for the empire like oh, very very okay. surface level stuff he never went deep in and 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 tried to infiltrate stuff he really only had to ki- get information from someone and then he would kill them or something gotcha like that. Like okay he, he he did some stuff like that but like Again, the potential of the show is good. I don't know how many episodes they're going to be dropping. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, again, I will – I'll keep plugging away to it. Honestly, kind of going to another another uh, subject, I've been trying to keep up with She-Hulk. I really just can't. And so – I don't I just, know. I, really, I don't know that I'm going to be able to. Yeah. I really don't want this to be another situation like that where – we kind of fall off because I want to keep doing these and I love doing the, making these episodes and, and doing this stuff, but we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful, but also I think this is 12. This is going to be 12 episodes. If I remember correctly, um, that would make sense if you said three is a quarter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, Andor. like, again, I was never hyped for this. I'm not hyped for it, but I'm watching it. Because mm-hmm. it's an aesthetic that I really, really like. And I hope some really good stuff happens. Hopefully Cassian meets some people. Like you were saying, we get a group of people, new characters that we like, and they split off and do their own thing. And then later down the line, we follow them and stuff like that. But who knows? Um, so far, Andor, what are you giving the show so far? Oh, I haven't really thought about this, oddly enough. Um, for now, I'm, I'm going to give it a seven it's peaking enough of my interest that a, a solid seven mm-hmm. that it's not like, okay, I hate this. I can't watch this. Um, but it's not so high that I'm like, yo, I need to tune in for Cassian when it drops, mm-hmm. you know, like we have on the Mandalorian, even the book of Boba Fett. will mm-hmm. I will say that I was more hype. So I, for now I'm going to give it a seven, a solid seven, uh, and just, just see what the future holds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to give it a five. Just because it's middle of the road, it's not too hot, not too cold. It's, 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 it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Right. Yeah. Um, I got to I got to see more to give it more. I got to see more to give it less. So he basically just wants more frog lady. Stop it. Anyway, you can't be like this on camera. <laughs> Any, anyway. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I definitely want to be doing more podcast stuff. Give us some suggestions. Give us some ideas of topics to hit. If you want to see more, let us know down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.